Speaking of recent signings, let's move on now to um, a trade, actually. We have some trade talk, but that means we're definitely heading towards a draft into the offseason. We had... This is your boy. Yeah, my boy. He, is, he actually has been my boy for a few years. Kevin Fiala gets traded to the Kings for a first and defensive prospect. can't remember his first name, but last name's Farber, I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure. He's a captain of an NCAA team. I wanna t- I'm going to let you take the lead because this is something you you talk about a lot, and I actually really agree with you in this instance, that you have a, a, a bit about... You know, trading younger yeah. players and assets for guys who are legitimate finished products you know what you're going to get and this is an example of that oh it's without a doubt an example of that you know before we get into that you know what you're going to get with kevin fial like you said he he's basically william nylander um if you look at his overall stats he's got a 90 projected war expected value of offenses and nine is in the 93rd percentile he's one of the prime finishers in the league with a goals per 60 in the 97th percentile he just doesn't play defense one of the problems with these types of players is um, they can fall asleep at the wheel at times, which is what you see with Nylander. He'll be one of the best wingers in the leagues and then yeah. fall asleep. But at the end of the day, the dude was a point per game playing on a second line um, that was full of nobodies. It was like Gautier and Matt Boldy. I know Matt Boldy's young and he's good, but he's not He's not Kirill Kaprizov. This dude, he didn't even play power play one last year. He will now. He will now, and he's going to be on a line with probably Kempe and Anze Kopitar. Anze Kopitar is one of the better puck distributors in the league. Mm-hmm. This guy might put up 90 points next year. He's, like, yeah. he's one of the guys to do And he only played 16, 15 minutes last year. There were times when he only played 12, 13 minutes. I don't remember the coach, what, what his name is. Dean Evison. Dean Evison. Don't really think he liked Kevin Fiala, yeah. which I think also motivated this move. Um, but yeah, moving into what you were saying, it, it makes a lot of sense. When when you look at it from the Kings' perspective, when they're drafting in the first round, 19th overall, assuming they didn't make this trade, I mm-hmm. think it was in the 19th I overall right, pick, yeah. if you told the Kings' GM that this 19th overall pick at the age of 26 was going to be a point-per-game player, you think that's a home run, right? If you draft the first overall pick, him being a point-per-game player at 25 is a home run. It's, yeah, because you never know. It, exactly. So th- this trade makes a lot of sense. I heard a lot of people on Twitter going, oh, you know, the first round pick and the prospect might be a problem. Like, look, the the front office in Minnesota isn't stupid. They know that trading a pick for the finished product of that pick makes it a steal for LA, which is why they had to throw in Farber, who is a pretty good young prospect. I think overall, the trade was very, very good for both teams because A, um, the Kings are looking legit now and they, they have no scoring depth past Adrian Kempe. I know Anze Kopitar scores, scores goals, but he's more of the puck distributor. Their their um, depth falls off a cliff. Now they add a point-per-game player who almost had 30 goals last year. He might have had 30. I don't really know. Um, and they can look like they can make a run in a really bad Pacific division. Yeah. Um, last year, they made the playoffs, and they weren't even a, a wild-card team. This year, with that division, honestly, not getting much better past the Golden Knights, they can do it again. They can. I think they're going to be... A, I don't think they're done either. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to be active in free agency because this is... We'll talk about next week. This is a sneaky, sneaky deep free agent class. There's a lot of really good players, especially mm-hmm. at forward. And that's where they need the depth because defensively, they're actually pretty solid, the Kings. I think that this is going to be... The, the Kings aren't done. They're going to be a good team. To, they're going to be a team to reckon with next year. They're going to be young, hungry. Um, they can do some damage in the Pacific. And also, considering that Garen had literally no leverage... To get a first and a prospect, it's honestly not terrible. Yes, they they true. weren't able to keep him. Everyone knows they're in cap hell. The only and they traded him. Like a team could have offer sheeted him, and I, I don't have the chart in front of me. But would you have gotten as much value for that? Maybe not. So to make that trade with the situation he was in, he did okay. Yeah, we should have mentioned this too. He just signed a seven year, I think seven seven point nine nine million dollar deal, which is I thought pretty fair value. Pretty fair value. Yeah. Like you said, the trade works for Minnesota as well. A very intangible part of trades is leverage. Like like you said, Minnesota had no leverage. They knew that Parise and Suter buyouts were going to kill them. They had to offload this money. And if there was one guy to do it, it was going to be Fiala because they're not getting rid of Kaprizov. Boldy makes no money. And the, Dean Evison do, probably doesn't like Kevin Fiala. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, what do you know? Like, um, you're not in the, in, in the locker room. Fair. But when you're seeing a guy play second line, yeah. um, power play two, 13 minutes a night when he's putting up 80 points, I mean, I don't think... 
They're yeah, best you friends. Don't, you don't mean he doesn't like him as a person. He probably just doesn't like his play style or yes. trust him as much. Yes, exactly. And that's, why, and that's reflected a nice time. The fact that they got a first-round pick. It's not bad. I think... I think they were, yeah, they were probably always going to get a first because I think if you offer sheet someone seven point nine, it's multiple firsts. Mm-hmm. Um, but they they had to you know make the move and maybe they didn't want to rely on someone offer shooting them. They they took what they could get and they got the draft to pick now, right? They they made it ahead of the draft knowing they were going to be able to pick it to pick with that pick. So without a doubt, if I if I was a team, I would have traded up to probably the eighth or ninth overall pick for Kevin Fiala. Yeah, because once once again, an, an eighth overall pick to be a point per game player is is, is a pretty damn good that's pick. True. That's very true. Yeah, like Valerie Nachushkin, we just talked about. It took almost ten years to become that type of player. Kevin Fiala is yeah. what twenty six. Still, he's gonna just just probably starting his prime now. Yeah, I, I would I would take that all day. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more content. And find the link to our full podcast and all our socials in the description down below. Also, don't forget to turn on those notifications to get live updates on new videos that we release.